Welcome back to Tea and Forget Me Nots. I'm Rachel and today I'm going to be upcycling a chest of drawers. Now I got this chest of drawers for five pounds, which seems like a bargain, except they're already painted and painted mm, a little bit questionably. So today's question is, is it worth spending a little bit more money on something that isn't already painted or getting a bargain, but then having to put the extra work in? And if finding a bargain is the right route for you, then you might enjoy my blog post on how to find free furniture and tips for being the first to know about it. So I'll leave it in the description for you to check out as well. All right, let's get into it. So on to the piece. So this chest of drawers I found on Facebook Marketplace, as I said, for five pounds, which I thought was a great deal. So yes, the paint was chipped, but the piece was structurally sound and just had the usual dings and dents that come with a bit of age. However, it was clear that the paint would require completely replacing rather than just painting over because it was peeling off and probably done with a paint that wasn't really designed for furniture in the first place. And I think this is one of the main things you need to think about, whether it's worth paying that little bit more for a piece of furniture that maybe hasn't had any work done to it, is how much work actually will it involve? If you glance at it and think, oh, a fresh coat of paint, fine, that will take me one hour. However, that is very different to completely removing all of the paint and then sanding, prepping, cleaning, it was nice that we had a brand stamp on the back of the piece so I could find out a little bit more about it and it was from the Beautiful Wood Reproduction Limited. So I would normally start by cleaning the piece but I got to removing the paint first. And if you don't know about this amazing tool called a carbide scraper, this could save you a lot of time. You just apply a bit of pressure to the hand which is holding the handle at the front of the piece and then you pull the scraper back in the direction of the grain but do be careful not to use too much pressure or you'll start taking away the wood underneath it as well and while the scraper does a great job of getting lots of paint removed quickly this process actually took hours and hours in total so between all the little divots of paint that were left and the ridges around the drawers and sanding with my delta head sander, so the triangular attachment to get right up to the edges, it really was not a quick process and took much longer than I was expecting or hoping for. So after restoring it back to its original form and sanding it nice and smooth, I then got to cleaning it all over to make sure that it was a suitable surface to now accept the paint that I was going to use on it. My original plan was to use some beautiful handles that I had with a floral inlay in them. However, you'll see from cleaning the handles just how big the holes were that were left by the handles that were originally attached. And I could have filled in these holes and put the handles I was hoping to use but they would have just looked too close together and I didn't think they were going to look right. So I chose to use the existing handles. So the colour combination I pictured in my head was the really classic look of brown and a whitey cream. And as I was starting with a light coloured wood I decided to do a first coat of coffee bean which is a brown chalk paint. And I used that to quickly get myself to a dark brown rather than building up many, many different layers of a stain. And you'll see that this drawer front is not attached to the drawers. And the reason for that is that the handles were so well glued in that when I eventually managed to knock them out with a hammer, no less, the drawer loosened from the drawer front. I thought it would actually be easier to paint those without them attached to the entire drawer. One drawer I painted with the drawer attached and the other drawer front I painted by itself. And a word to the wise and always learn from my mistakes is if you have giant holes left by your handles, put some tape over them before you paint that drawer front or it might splash down. So I recently saw this trick for how to paint in dovetail joints nicely and that was to put some frog tape over them and then use a knife to cut out the pattern. 
and then you've got an easy way to paint the dovetail joints without getting a little detail brush to get a precise line. I always like to experiment so I went with one side using this technique and the other side just using a brush to see which worked out better and I would say if you haven't got a really good detail artist brush like this one here I think is brilliant then the frog tape is probably going to give you better results but it took so much longer to actually put in place that if you've only got a flimsy small brush or even a big brush then it's probably a better technique. So after the coat of coffee bean I then went back with my stain which was my original plan and I chose the voodoo gel stain called tobacco road and as I already had the brown base I wanted to use this stain really to add some dimension to the brown so it wasn't just a solid block colour but would catch the light in different ways and bring out some warmer contrast and make the piece look a bit more interesting and I did that both on the top and both of the drawers. For the stain I applied it with a combination of either a foam brush or an applicator pad depending on the location and the nice thing about it was because it was water based again I could move it around quite easily with just adding a little bit of water. I was going for quite a translucent look particularly on the top. And you know how sometimes things are just so much more obvious after you've got a paint, coat of paint on? So I did know that there were a couple of holes in this top, but to me it added to the character of it when it was a natural looking top. However, after it had some paint on it, it was really obvious and just looked like it was damaged, rather than adding to its charm. So a trick for how to cover up holes either on natural wood or when there is paint already on there is to apply some tape around the holes and then add your wood filler, in this case I used Dixie Mud, so then you're not getting wood filler spilling out onto your finished surface that you want to keep in as good a condition as possible and it just makes for an easier process of tidying up. I wasn't sure how much force I would need to get the handles back in the holes because they were so difficult to get out. So I actually decided to reassemble both the handles and the drawer that was now broken before I applied a sealer to the drawer fronts so that it was all in place and then I sealed it. I used Gorilla Wood Glue to reattach the handles and those drawer fronts. My initial plan was to use a clamp to keep the drawer attached to the drawer front while it was drying, however I found it was just too small to be able to attach so I ended up putting some heavy books on it to weigh it down and it has set and glued perfectly. So while all my various coats of coffee bean and stain were going on I was also painting the base and to start with I used a primer because there were knots in the wood and I was going to use a light colour so I didn't want those knots in the wood to risk bleeding through at a later date. And I did two coats of the Boss primer in white in total before I started with my colour. And I quite often do a couple of swatches to test out my colours because I can't necessarily visualise them until they're against the other colours of the piece. So I did two tests, I did drop cloth which is a whitey cream and oyster which is more of a whitey grey. And I compared them against the dark brown of the coffee bean and personally I preferred drop cloth so that is what I went with. I did two coats of drop cloth and was happy with the coverage of that and applied it using a flat synthetic brush. Now the nice thing about using chalk paint is that you can use a mister bottle to make the paint move around a little bit more easily which is great especially in the warmer weather. And I used drop cloth on the handles as well to contrast against the brown. And if you haven't seen this amazing trick of using an egg carton to hold your handles while they're drying, I highly recommend it. It works a treat. So to seal the entire piece, I did two coats of clear coat in satin. And you may know that I'm a massive fan of using a blue sponge to apply clear coat, especially on a large flat surface like this top. In this case, I actually put the sponge in a pair of tights and that keeps any of the little flakes or bubbles that sometimes come away from the sponge within the tights or pantyhose so they don't get on your piece. So here's how it turned out 
and I'm really happy with how it looks but I would never have guessed the amount of time that I had to put into it to get it to look like this. Was it worth five pounds? Mm. Well, if you think about how many hours of labour this is into it now, I probably wouldn't be able to sell it for that price. Whilst brown and white will never go out of style, the piece looks loved again and it's a nice update for it. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing or watching another video in the playlist. Thanks very much, until next time, bye!